Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat in which we will discuss the internal rate of return or IRR. What is the internal rate of return? Well, it's a tool to find out the rate of return. So the first thing I want you to pay attention to, it's you are looking for a percentage, a rate of return for a project for, for the purpose of what? Of capital budgeting. So simply put, a company might want to expand. They want to buy a new equipment. They want to buy a piece of land. They want to make an investment. They want to spend money on advertising. They want to find out if they do so, they're going to have to put out some money today and they're expecting some return down the road. They want to know what percentage is the rate of return on that project. Now, IRR could be used to supplement something called net present value or NPV. Now, on the prior session, we looked at net present value and the net present value gives us a dollar answer. So when we computed NPV, we said, for example, NPV is $42,000. That was the answer or NPV equal to $16,530. That was the answer. NPV tells you whether the project is acceptable or not based on a dollar amount. IRR, it's going to tell you what is the rate of return on that project, specifically the internal rate of return, the rate of return that the company is earning. NPV, they give you a rate, they give you a required rate, and they want to find out under this required rate of return, would this project be positive NPV or negative NPV? IRR, basically they're, they're answering the same questions, except IRR tells you exactly how much you are getting for that project. MPV, all what it tells you, you are earning more than the required rate of return, but you don't know what is the IRR, what is how much is the project earning. All what you know, it's earning more because MPV is, if MPV is positive. Another way to say it is IRR is the rate that's going to give you the present value of the discounted cash inflows equal to the present value of the discounted cash outflows. Simply put, when you discount your inflows, you're gonna have you're gonna get to a number, and that number is X. And when you disc when you discount your outflows, that's number gonna be X as well. So those two are equal to each other. So if your discounted cash inflows were a thousand, your discounted cash outflows are a thousand. And the rate of return that's gonna give you this same number is called the IRR. So simply put, another way to say it. You remember, net present value have to be positive. An IRR, the net present value is zero. Why the net present value is zero? Think about it. If your cost, if your discounted cost equal, equal which is the negative cash, the outflow of cash, equal to the inflow of cash, then you have NPV equal to zero. So another way to say NPV, uh, I'm sorry, another way to say what IRR is, IRR is when NPV equal to zero. Okay, what does that mean? Let's put it in a formula. When you take your future cash inflows, you multiply them by a present value factor, which you should know this number. You should know when you are undertaking a project, you should be able to estimate your future cash inflows. That's part of capital budgeting. And you're going to look at your initial investment or outflow at period zero. Those two should equal to each other. Also, the initial investment is known. Well, good. Now we have three factors. We have the future cash inflows. We have the inflows. We have the outflows. All what we are missing is the present value factor. Now what we can do is we can rearrange the formula to find what's the present value factor. Well, the present value factor is the investment cost, whatever cost we did, divide by the future value of cash flows. And that's going to give us the present value specifically, not the present value. It's going to be an annuity because it's going to involve a future, assuming most likely it's going to be an annuity. It could be only one payment, but that's easy to compute. So most likely it will be a future value of an annuity because you have a future cash annual cash inflows more than one. So what does that mean? It means let's go ahead and apply this formula to find out how to find the IRR. Then we will discuss specifically how the IRR differ from NPV. They, they don't really differ, but how does it differ in a sense? What is the purpose of, of the NPV? What is the purpose of IRR? The best way to illustrate this is to work an example with some numbers. Before we look at an example, please, I would like to remind you, you're most likely a student or a CPA candidate, and that's great. You need to go a step further. Go to farhatlectures.com 
and take a look at my material, resources, lectures, multiple choice, true false exercises. That's going to help you with your accounting courses as well as your CPA preparation. I don't replace your CPA review course. I'm going to help you do better in your CPA preparation. If you have not connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so. Take a look at my LinkedIn recommendation. Like this recording. If you're watching, it's helping you like it. Connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. So let's take a look at this example. Adam Company can purchase a new machine at a cost of 104320. That's the cost. Simply put, that's the initial investment and it's today. That will save $20,000 per year in cash operating cost. The return is positive cash, $20,000 for the next for the next 10 year the machine has has a useful life of 10 years. Now bear in mind, I just want to I, I, I want to emphasize this. On the CPA exam or in your accounting course, depending on how much your teacher wants to test you. IRR, it's not easy to compute unless you have some clean numbers the way I'm giving you. But IRR would need either IRR would need would e would need either a financial calculator, an Excel sheet, or some sort of a financial program. But I'm gonna use some simple numbers to illustrate the point because that's all what we need to do here. So let's use what we learned about earlier. And what we said earlier is if we take the inflows of cash, multiply them by the present value factor, it's there should equal to the you should equal to the cost to the investment cost or the investment same thing let's let's use this formula if we rearrange and we put the present value factor equal to the cost this is the cost or the investment required divided by the annual cash inflow simply put we divide we divide by inflows of cash both sides of the equation so let's do that when we do that we'll take 104320 which is the cost or the investment divided by the inflow of cash and that's going to give us 5.216. Now, what does that mean? Is this the answer? No, that's not the answer. This is the present value annuity factor. Now, what do I need to do? Once I have the present value annuity factor, I need to go to the time value tables. And notice it's 5.216. And we are looking at a 10-year investment. Now, we're going to go to the present value annuity factor. And it should be in your textbook somewhere. And the period is on this side. So we're going to choose 10. Now, we don't know what the interest rate, what we're going to do, but we know the answer is 5.216, 5.216. And you're going to go across to come up with the closest factor to 5.216. Now, for my example, it's going to be a clean cut. So it's going to be a clean cut. It's going to be 5.2161. And you look, you look on the top and the IRR equal to 14%. Now, we find what the IRR is, but let's assume the IRR was 5.3. The factor was 5.3. 5.3 is between 5.4 and 5.2, right? So the rate is in between 13 and 14, and that's why you would need to find a calculator. But this example, keep it simple. Now, on the CPA exam, if they gave you anything, it will be straightforward. In a sense, it's computable. You can compute it. They don't expect you to do... Usually, it's, it's done by trial and error. And I'm going to show you what does it mean when you do it in a trial and error. But this number is clean cut. Now, what are the rules for IRR? If IRR is greater than the required rate of return, you accept the project. If the IRR is less than the required rate of return, you would reject. Now, what does that mean? Well, the best way to illustrate this is to go to an Excel sheet and show you how the numbers work and show you what, what I mean by what I mean by if IRR is greater than the required rate of return or lower. So let's go to the Excel sheet. So this is the Excel sheet for this exercise. And let me just review so you see what I'm looking at here. We have the cost. We have the cash flow, year one, year two, year three, all the way till year 10. We have, okay, let, let me show you what I did. So I took I took the annual cash inflows and we already know it's 14%. We already know the answer. But let's assume we don't know the answer. We don't know what IRR is. We already know the answer. Let me first show you how the answer work. What is IRR? Because we already computed the answer. And I'm gonna show you, if you don't know the answer, what would happen? So what we did is this, we took the 20,000 and since we know the IRR is 14%, we discounted the 20,000 one period at 14%. We did the same thing for period two, 20,000, uh, year three, another 20,000, so on and so forth. So I took all of those discounted cash flows and I add them up. This is the present value of the future cash inflows. Then I took them and I subtract them from the cost. And notice MPV equal to 2.3, assume this is zero, $2.30. This is just simply simply put, you're just gonna rounding. This is, this is a rounding issue. So notice the answer is zero. The answer is zero. Okay, 
what does that mean? It means this project, because we don't know, all what they told us is the cost is 104,320. That's all what we are told, the cost or the investment. And it's going to give you 20,000 for the next 10 years. What we did is we find out this project is earning 14%. Now, the question is this becomes, so this is the IRR. Now, is 14% an acceptable IRR? Well, the answer is, well, it all depends on the required rate of return. What is the required rate of return? It means how much the company wants to earn. Let's assume the company wants to earn 15%. The company has a required rate of return of 15%. Would this be an acceptable IRR? Well, let's test it. Let's test it. If the company requires 15%, if that's the required rate of return, then we're going to switch to MPV. Remember, the MPV gives you a rate that tells you this is the rate that the company wants to earn. So if the company wants to earn 15%, let me discount everything at 15%. Now, I'm changing this to an MPV problem. If I do 15% here, notice what's going to happen. Now I have a negative MPV. Why? Because the company wants to earn 15%. And we know from our computation a minute earlier that the internal rate of return of this project is 14. Well, guess what? The required rate, so the IRR, 14% is less than 15. We would reject because this project is not earning us the required rate of return, which is we want to earn 15. This project is earning, uh, we want to earn 14. We want to earn 15. This project is earning 14. Let's assume the required rate of return is less than 14%. I'm going to make it 13 for the sake of illustration. Notice what's going to happen when I do 13. When I do 13%, NPV is positive. What does that mean? If my required rate of return is 13, this project is earning me 14%. Well, that's good. That's unacceptable. So all what IRR gave us is what? It gave us exactly what this project is earning. But it answered the same thing as MPV. Okay, I, if IRR is uh, is is uh, is acceptable, NPV is is acceptable. If IRR is not acceptable, the MPV is not acceptable. Simply put, illustrated in this problem is 14% is basically what gives us MPV equal to zero. 14% will give us MPV to zero. Okay, if 14% MPV to zero, if re if your required rate of return, if the company wants to earn more than 14%, don't take this project because if you discount your cash flows based on 15%, that's going to be negative. If your required rate of return is anything less than 14, let's assume 10, if you discount those based on 10, the NPV will be positive, the IRR is acceptable, NPV is acceptable. So basically, they answer the same question in a different way. IRR tells you exactly the project is earning 14%. Whether that's acceptable or not, it all depends on your required rate of return. NPV, on the other hand, at discount your rate based on a given rate of return, and the answer would either be a negative or a positive NPV. Positive or zero NPV you accept, a negative NPV you would reject. Let's go back to the slides and discuss advantages and disadvantages of IRR. The advantages are it uses the time value of money, which is good when the time value of money is used. That's good because it's taken into account the time value. It also considered the cash flows for the entire project. Now, the disadvantages is this. It's difficult to calculate if, if the numbers are not straightforward. You'd have to use a financial calculator, Excel, or some sort of a software. Again, that's not really a disadvantage, but the point you want to know is it's a little bit complicated. And when you have, when cash flow switches between negative and positive, you might have different answers, multiple answers. Also, you want to consider all the cash flow for the project, but the effort to do so, that's a disadvantage. You might not be able to do so. All cash flows must be either positives or negatives. Otherwise, it will not work. You'll have multiple answers if the cash flow switching. And here it assumes all the cash flow is immediately reinvested at IRR, which is not reasonable when you're undertaking a project, but those are the assumptions that we do. So remember, NPV tells you whether, tells you whether the rate used given exceeds the hurdle rate, tells you whether the rate you are using is greater than the rate you want to earn. If that's the case, NPV is positive. You're going to have a positive NPV. But an NPV, the rate is given. The rate you are using is already given. It tells you whether that rate is higher or lower, but it doesn't tell you what is the required rate of return, not the required, the IRR. IRR gives you the rate of return. It tells you what is the percentage for the project when the MPV equal to zero. So that's the difference between them.
Okay, MPV, you're already given a rate and you're discounting everything based on that rate. And you're hoping the MPV is positive. If the MPV is positive, it means the rate giving exceeds the hurdle rate. What's the hurdle rate? It's the rate that the company wants to earn. That's all what it tells you. It tells you it's a greater. It doesn't tell you what the rate exactly is for this project. It tells you it's a greater than the hurdle rate. The IRR gives you exactly the rate where MPV equal to zero. It means it's breaking even. That's basically, they're both telling you the same thing. If the IRR, if the project is acceptable under IRR, giving our assumption, the, the, the project is acceptable under MPV and vice versa. So just want to let you know, they both supplement each other. What should you do now? Go to farhatlectures.com, work MCQs, true, false exercises. That's going to help you do better in your course, on your CPA exam. Invest in yourself. Good luck. Study hard. And of course, stay safe.